Okay, so welcome back to Diplo TV. Average golf, a four golf Chester. It is what uh, is turned out to be hybrid morning. Uh, I have just, if you are interested, I've just reviewed the TaylorMade uh, M4 hybrid. And although I'm not going to do head to head videos this morning, it's a great one to have a look at in relation to the numbers that I perhaps produce uh, very shortly in the next product, which is the Callaway Rogue hybrid. Um, again, I mentioned in the previous video, we tend to perhaps ignore the hybrids when a new product range is released all the interest is certainly in terms of viewing numbers everyone's interested how far does the driver go what are the new numbers we can achieve from that and like i said sometimes this product can be overlooked great product in terms of being able to <coughs> excuse me bridge gaps between longer irons into your fairways and then into driver so like i said the rogue now then the first thing is about this rogue is it like the fairway woods it's got jailbreak technology we don't need an explanation of jailbreak technology anymore we all know what that does but that coupled with the and let me reach for my phone for some technical data so yeah we've got jailbreak technology coupled with ultra thin face and hyper speed face cup technology um, basically yet again looking at maintaining ball speeds right across the face I'm expecting, and as I said, I've, I did the Rogue 3 wood last week again, which featured jailbreak, and I've got to say, ball speeds were incredibly high, which resulted in some long carries and some great performance from the Rogue 3 wood, but also great in terms of dispersion as well. I'm really interested to see if that is maintained as a hybrid. If it is, then it becomes a very, very interesting product from this Callaway Rogue range. Anyway, let's get that shutter up out into the cold and start to hit some golf balls. And I'll see how this performs. But like I said, interesting for me, I've just filmed the M4 video as well. Exactly the same three, 19 degrees worth of loft. So it'll be interesting to set those two numbers up as well and uh, see how the two of them compare. Okay, so before we go too much further, I'll just talk about this uh, club ad address because it's a little bit different to Callaway um, Rogue in terms of its uh, footprint. And it's different from, I'm actually gaming the Epic Hybrid at the moment. Epic was a bit more of a sort of classic shape. This is slightly different. And again, it's very much whether or not you can get on with these. I think it was similar to the sort of steelhead where they sort of start off from the hosel uh, thinner and build to the sort of same height then from middle to uh, to literally the end of the club face and it becomes very much a square um elongated shape i'm not overly keen on it if i'm honest with you it looks a little bit odd for me um at address you see a lot of club face at address and a lot of loft seems to be there even though it's yeah just making sure i've got the right uh, hybrid still in my hands um you see a lot of club face and yet a lot of loft so it's kind of and it's got a big footprint for a hybrid so maybe again in terms of confidence inspiring sat behind the ball this thing does that trick but for me i don't know if it suits my eye i'm not sure on that one in terms of from above a little bit odd down that um, toe end for me but anyway performance is what it's all about not bad start wasn't the best ball I've hit and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that one gets on in terms of performance. It's a better ball. Again, um, with the Rogue, I said about the three wood if you watched that review last week um, or at least in the last few days maybe, I like the sound of it. It's um, it's been dampened down but at the same time it's it's a nice it's not as hard feeling i would say as uh, as what the epic did um and hard i mean by feel and sound um so i'm liking that but um i think the key is like i said let's hit a few more balls let's have a look at performance first one okay second one really nice strike a few more and then have a bit of a that ball's gone right a couple more sit down give an overall assessment of the uh, Rogue Fairway. Right, I don't think I've moved very far from a position I was in uh, not sort of 15 minutes ago because it's a bit of a hybrid morning. I mentioned uh, in the intro, I was doing the M4 TaylorMade. I've gone through their numbers and I'm about to go through the, uh, the Rogue uh, with yourselves. 
and it'll be an interesting like you said if you flip between the two videos you can certainly uh, do your own little comparison in terms of numbers but for me it's great to draw a parallel directly from something that's very very similar same swing this morning um but anyway, let's just concentrate on this first of all uh ball speeds good Am I noticing an effect of jailbreak in this like I've perhaps seen in three wood and, and drivers? Because I do think, you, you know that I do feel that uh, whatever technology, whatever you want to call it, in the Rogue and in the Epic, I do think that ball speeds were high. It certainly have seen that teamed up with TaylorMade TP5s, good ball speeds. It's not really shown in this hybrid, if I'm honest, um, about where I'd expect it to be in terms of ball speed. In some occasions, it's dropped off a little bit, but 127.9, spinning at 3,500 revs. Again, all those numbers bang on. Carry distance of 194, and overall 212, launching at 12.7. All those numbers are perfectly fine, acceptable, and I'd be more than happy with it. I wouldn't personally choose to game the, um, this hybrid, because of the shape of it and that's because it just does not suit my eye um, but if I just talk about performance I also probably wouldn't choose to game it on performance either just slightly uh, falls off for me and uh, maybe just a maybe a change in shaft might change things around a little bit but like I said if I put it in a head-to-head -head on this morning's two videos the TaylorMade M4 product pretty much comes out on top to be honest with you very very similar numbers that I found there slightly quicker ball speeds uh, spinning the same and I'm, I've got the two sheets of numbers in front of me now, uh, carrying a little bit further and launching identical. So it's hard for me to be really positive about the Rogue. Um, once again, I think if you're looking for a hybrid to fill a gap, a void in your bag at the moment, um, then certainly you can't sit here and criticize product when there's nothing wrong with it. It's a very, very good club. It's just for me, again, a game epic hybrid. Would I change into the Rogue? No, I wouldn't. There's not enough benefit in there for me. But like I said, the point that I'm reviewing this product is if you've got a, a hybrid that you're looking to move on from, then by all means, the likes of this Rogue, the likes of the M4, the M3, quality product, it seems to me, all performing very, very well. A lot of consistency. Once again, it's hard to talk about dispersion because about how well I hit the ball this morning, I felt so I struck the ball well, and the numbers seem fairly tightly grouped. So, you know, there's some consistency coming out of there, but there's, there's, a, there's slightly, I suppose the big thing for me is not really seeing the ball speeds I was expecting uh, with the introduction of jailbreak um, into the hybrid. So not there for me, I'm afraid. But anyway, that's my review done. Uh, stick around because there's plenty more coming this week inundated with product at the moment I can't keep uh, knocking out videos fast enough so as ever thumbs up if you like the video comments down below and uh, I'll make every effort to reply and uh, I'll see you soon